Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's episode of Thrive Not Survive, where we get together with people from around the world and just share tips about how to thrive and not just survive during turbulent times. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Chantel Cox. I'm an author and transformation coach who empowers motivated women who are ready to break free from the bondage of daily stress and anxiety and really step into their full potential to create a life that they love. So I am so excited to be here today with Walita Cherie, and she is a mindset and personal finance coach for millennials and is excited to share about how to prosper during financial chaos. Uh, what are some tips you would have for us time to thrive? I would like to share with you guys five tips for your mindset that you can apply today and use forever. Um, so the first thing is for mindset is you have to stop worrying. I know a lot of people out there are concerned about what's going on in the world, which is great. We need to be concerned. We need to show empathy, but you have to stop worrying. And what I mean by that is, Take into control what you can control. Whatever you can't control, you kind of have to like just put it to the back burner. The reason is, is because our bodies are not designed to live in a state of fight or flight, meaning we're either, either running from a situation or we are fighting back in a situation. That is only supposed to be used in an emergency. And if you find yourself constantly worrying all the time, you are constantly keeping your body in a state of fight or flight, which Um, spikes cortisol which is a hormone inside of the body and it causes fat to accumulate in the abdominal area which starts to um, put pressure on your vital organs it also can increase your blood pressure Um, it can interrupt your sleep it can interrupt your eating and just your mood in general so you have to stop worrying and put things into perspective is this a real threat or is this a perceived threat whatever you can change change those things whatever you can't change you can't like I said put that to the back burner the second tip I have for you guys is um, put good information through your eyes and ears never before have people been able to actually say they have time to do things you have to organize your day of course because I know we still have some people work from home and some people take care of kids but you need to put on your schedule time for you to grow and what I mean by taking care of Um, your eyes and your ears, read good books during this time. If you have um, problems that you haven't found solutions for, search for those in books. Listen to good podcasts. Um, Watch things that are going to be um, healthy for your mental state. So if you are noticing the news is constantly making you fear, maybe you don't need to watch the news all day, every day. Maybe you choose a very small segment so you can stay on top of things, But when you feel that worry and that fear, you turn it off. So guard your eyes and guard your ears, read good books, listen to good podcasts, and um, watch things that are beneficial to your growth. The third thing I want to talk about is um, monitor who you are with and where you're spending the most time. And right now, we're all spending time in places like our home. So it's not like we're going out to the club or going out to the library or to the coffee shop. We're all at home. And for the first time, many people have had to face their spouses and their kids, something most people didn't have to do because they were too busy to really get to know that um, their family because of the way society has divided us with our time. So I would say, make sure you're um, nurturing your relationships. But also, when I'm saying, um, look at who you're spending time with, look at how you're spending time online. Are you in gossip columns? Are you um, watching things that's causing fear again to spike? Be careful of that, because who you spend your time with and where you spend your time, you become the average of that those people that you're constantly spending your time with so i try to surround myself myself with positive people i try to surround myself with people who are going in the same direction as me Um, i try to keep myself grounded with people who can keep me accountable because you don't want to put yourself in the midst of people who are going to tell you that what you're doing is okay If you want to go to the next level, you need people to tell you what you're doing that's not okay. So get you an unofficial um, board members, get a group of board members, people who are going to, somebody who's going to hold you accountable, somebody who's going to encourage you, 
somebody who's going to challenge you, someone who's going to um, be your cheerleader no matter what. You need to find a group of people because you want to stay positive. If you find yourself constantly being negative, look at the group of people you're around and see what they're talking about. And I guarantee you, you're probably going to notice that those people you're spending time with are being negative, which is why you're starting to speak like that. If you find yourself around people who are always optimistic, you'll find yourself being optimistic. So um, that's the third tip. Be careful of who you're spending your time with and where because you become the sum average of those people. The fourth uh, thing tip I want to give you is practice gratitude. In our world today, it is easy to say how bad things are. But I challenge you to change your perspective. If it's raining outside, don't get mad that it's raining. Be grateful that it's raining because crops can grow, which means you can eat food. If you just get laid off from your job, I want you to practice gratitude even in that because if you really think about it, for most Americans, we don't even like our jobs. And so maybe this is your time to start that business you've been procrastinating. Maybe this is the time that you write that book or time that you can nurture your time with your family and your friends, um, your roommate. So make sure you are practicing gratitude. And wh what I do is every morning I wake up and I look for something that I'm grateful for. And if you can't think of anything outside of um, just being alive, that is a privilege. It's a blessing to be alive because not everybody, especially now with COVID-19, not everybody is blessed to say that they have another day to live. So if your heart is beating, you have an opportunity. That's something to be grateful for. If you have food, be grateful that you have food and clean water and clean air. Be grateful for everything that you have because one minute of, uh, I heard this from Les Brown, one minute of being angry or having a negative emotion can, supp can suppress your immune system and it can suppress it for four to five hours, which means for four to five hours from one minute of being angry or upset or sad, you can cause yourself to get sick because of a four to five hour time frame that you've now lowered your immune system. On the contrary, if you're happy and you're laughing, you have in, in one minute of just doing that, you can boost your immune system and you can boost it where you're protecting and you're enhancing your immune system for up to 24 hours. So I say choose gratitude because this is a time that we didn't choose. Okay, we could have been born at any other time in space, but we were born during this time, during this moment. Be grateful because you may have something to bring to the world that you don't even know yet. So you need to tap into that. And the only way you can truly know your potential is if you are grateful for every single opportunity that you're given. And then the last piece for mindset is um, be a person of action. It's easy to get um, indulged in information but we need to take action. Each of us are given a gift and a talent that we need to use. You can't just keep that to yourself. When you die, and we all will die, make sure you don't take those things to the grave. Make sure what you were supposed to give to the world, you, you gave to the world. If you are supposed to be an orator, a person who speaks, make sure you're using your voice. If you are supposed to be a person of influence, make sure you're taking advantage of that. If you are a leader, make sure you, you keen in on your skills so that you can be a, a better leader. Be a person of action. Don't be a procrastinator because it's easy to procrastinate. But guess what? We're living in a time now that you don't have an excuse to procrastinate because procrastination is kind of out of the picture. You're at home. For most of you, if you're watching and you lost your job, you, you don't have a job now to, to drive through hours of traffic and having to worry about the stress of that. So you have that time that you can now get what you need to get done, done. So make sure you focus on that. All things that you can do right now in order to get ahead and prosper during this time. So, Walida, for people who maybe are wanting a little more support with this, so, you know, they've heard your amazing tips, they've taken notes, what would be their next step? Uh, well, I have a free course that I can give you guys, and it's, uh, it goes into the mindset piece. Um, and the reason why I think you should start there is because, like I said, think about a lottery winner. You can get a lot of money, but if you don't have the right mindset, you can lose all of your money, too. So I would say um, you can start with the uh, free course. I'm going to put it in the chat 
start with the free course and it, I really try to break it down into a way that gives you a perspective. Uh, just put it into the chat, give you a perspective of your mindset. So then you'll know from there, which next steps you can take um, after you've done that course. And it's, it shouldn't take you longer than an hour to go through the whole course. Um, and it's broken into sections. So if you have to, for time management purpose, you can do a, a module every day for a week. Wow, that's amazing. Um, and for anyone listening, I am a lifelong learner. And so I have taken a ton of online courses and done challenges and all kinds of things. I I've just, anything I can find and grab onto. And I can tell when that person has an education background, just the way <laughs> that it's laid out. It just makes logical sense. You kind of, in the beginning, they're like, here's what I'm going to teach you. Here's the objectives to the lesson. And then it walks you through it and it makes sense. And then at the end, there's some type of, you know, what did you learn? Like reflect on it. And then I've taken other courses made like wonderful content, but it's just very like disorganized. And I'm like, what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> so I love it when educators step into the online world and use their knowledge. Um, it just makes the, the learning as adults, like just makes it that much more easy. <laughs> there's, there's definitely, I think, uh, seven different styles of learning. And uh, most people don't know that. And so they try to make it one style fits all and you can lose people that way. So I, I've tried my best to make it where I can reach people of all different learning styles. So if not three or four of them, if I can't reach all seven, I'll at least try to get three or four styles in, uh, my, in my courses. 